Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to explore the difference between a cloud pour and a puddle pour that creates pearl-like cells, okay? Are they technically cells? Eh, yes and no. They're shaped like cells, but they have no color in them. Usually, normal cells have color inside of color inside of color. These are more of, of the, if the satin enamels is eating up your color and making this boulder like shape that people are calling pearls. I don't know. This technique has been around for a very long time. Just so you know, this is not a new technique. It's something that has been tweaked a little bit, but it's been out there for a very long time. Melly D, if you don't know who that is, which I don't understand how you wouldn't, but there's a lot of new people to pouring that don't know about Melly D. She was the first to come up with the idea of using satin enamels in your white paint to create that cloudy-like texture um, or those little mega cells, <laughs> little pearl cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to mix up a batch of this to use for two different techniques. And then I'm also going to test something that is not this that will create the same kind of effect, I hope. That second part is a maybe. I'm bringing you along on an experimental ride, okay? So first thing we need to do is make up some white paint that has this in it, okay? And just so you know, the reason why I'm trying to find other things to use besides this to get that effect is because this is very hard to find. Now, if you walk into a Michaels, you hardly ever see it. If you go online to Amazon, the white is always sold out because that's the most popular one. And if you go online to michaels.com, sometimes they have it. Most times that I've checked, they didn't. They may have it right now. I'm not sure I haven't checked. Because like I said, I'm going to experiment with other things to try to make my life easier. So, uh, Home Depot sells bare products. They sell a enamel paint that is a satin finish that works for the cloud port. I'm not too happy with it for the dump technique, for the uh, puddle pour technique. For this, I tried it a little bit and it really didn't have that great of effect. But I'm working on things here and I'm hoping that I'm going to have something very easy for you guys. So, again, first thing we need to do is make our white paint. So, into this cup, I am going to dump in one part white acrylic paint. Now, just like I tell you with the bloom recipe... When it comes to something like the cloud pour or anything where you're trying to get a special effect other than your normal average acrylic pouring effects, chemistry matters. So I know that from over the years using it, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic works and I also know Windsor & Newton works. I have not tried Amsterdam or any of them yet. But um, I know that those two paints work. And a lot of people use Artist Loft White anyway, so that's good. So one part paint, two parts Floetrol. I have it all measured out here. Okay. Don't mind my cat. She's over here drinking. <laughs> uh, half a part. Of pouring medium. I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought there. And then a half of a part of the satin enamels. So now this is the white paint we are going to use for both techniques. 
The difference between the two is with the cloud pour, you fill a cup up with your paint and you pour it in ring pour fashion. And with the other puddle pour technique, you're just pouring the paint straight onto the white base and you uh, are tilting around a lot to get those special little tiny pearl cells, okay? So we're gonna mix this up. Now the key thing with that, the dump and swirl or puddles, puddle pour, whatever you want to call it. The key thing with this technique here to get these little things is the paint needs to be really, really, really thin, okay? But with the cloud pour, it's not thin like this. So the best thing for you to do is if you want to make some of this ahead of time, just keep it in this form right here. Don't add any water to it or anything like that yet until you're ready to use it. And let's say we're going to do that, the little pearl cell one first, then just pour some off into another cup and thin it out. Leaving this for when you want to do your cloud pours, okay? Because you want it to be a little bit thicker for the cloud pour. So now I have, we're going to do the pearl cell first. So I have the white in there, but again, it's too thick. So I'm going to thin it out with some water. How much water? That's approximately a teaspoon. I will show you on a piece of paper how thin it is. It's still too thick. So here, I'll use an actual teaspoon to, uh, actually, I'll, yeah, teaspoon. Not that, not that this helps you guys, because I'm using, this is a five ounce cup. It's only filled up um, three quarters of the way. I started off making it in a bigger cup. It's just very hard to explain this consistency thing. I don't think that a lot of people understand how hard it is to give an exact measurement. So that's why I feel like the water thing or the paper thing is better. Because you can see how fast it's running down the paper. So we're just about done here. I think we're going to go a little bit more. So now this is the paint that we're going to use to make our painting. It's going to go on the base and we're going to pour our colored paints on top of it. But now what if we were going to do a cloud pour? We would be taking this white paint and layering it in between our colors inside of a cup. That's where a lot of people are getting confused. They keep hearing the cloud pour technique, but they're seeing paintings like this. This is not the cloud pour technique. What this is, is you're using the cloud pour recipe to perform this type of a technique. Okay, so that's where people are getting confused. I've been answering questions all over the place in uh, my Facebook group and so that's hopefully helps you understand it a little bit better. So let me get a piece of paper here and show you this. This way you'll know approximately how thin it is. I put a little bit more than that. Let me just make sure that 
I'm in focus here in camera. See how fast that's running? So that's what you're looking for. In all honesty, if you, you get a thinness like that and you do this technique and it doesn't work, try thinning out your white a little bit further. So now we need to make our colors, right? So we're going to go very simple because I don't want to take up too much time. And I'm only going to mix one with you because the rest are going to be mixed the same. So I have here turquoise blue by Liquitex. I'm going to put into this cup, oh, about a grape size amount of paint. Okay. If you want to make more, you can make more. The flow trawl I'm going to add to this, I'm just going to cover. I'm going to pour it in the cup until the paint is covered. Okay. This is flow trawl. I just strained it into a bigger, uh, uh, another container. And then a little tiny splash of pouring medium. Here, I'll show you on a spoon how much I'm putting in. No measuring, just a little splash of that. Okay. Then we're going to mix it. And you're going to use water until it is the same consistency as your white. You want everything to be the same. Okay. So we'll add some water. And you can test your colors on a bigger sheet of paper side by side to make sure they run at the same speed. And again, like I said, if this isn't working for you, then your paints are probably too thick or you haven't added in enough satin enamels. All right. So we are good to go here. I'm going to mix up my other two colors and then we will start the pour. Okay, so I mixed up a whole bunch of colors, spilled some orange, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, so the first one we are going to do is considered the puddle pour using the cloud recipe. Okay, so I made it with you. Here it is in here. I'm going to pour it on the canvas. Just like that. And then I'm going to pick a couple of random colors and pour them in a puddle fashion in the center of the white. You could do this any way you want. You could string it through. You can put it in a cup and pour it out. Whatever way you want. It all works, okay? So the first color I have here is a Prussian blue. Then some bright aqua green. And how about some cherry yellow? Just like so. All right, now the key with this technique to get those little pearl-like cells is you have to stretch the paint. So you can't focus on your design. Well, you can a little bit, but if you're trying to keep a design that you made in here in the center, it's not going to happen. Okay. So the key is to stretch the paints out. Mm -hmm. 
very, very well. So I'm gonna come down this way, off that corner, come back over this way, off this corner. We're gonna come over here, go off this corner, and then we're gonna come down this way and do a really hard tilt, okay? We tilted off so much of that paint. Okay, and then you're gonna sit and you're gonna let it do its job. Now, it doesn't happen instantaneously. You have to wait for it to develop. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to pause. I'm gonna put you on time lapse and when it's done, I will come back. While we wait for that other one to develop, I'm gonna go ahead and do the cloud pour with you. So what you wanna do for the cloud pour is you wanna layer your, your colors in the cup and you want to remember the first color you put in is going to be the last color that pours out of the cup. When doing a cloud pour, you want the, the center to have the white puffy cloud look. So the first color you're gonna put in this cup is going to be some of your white mix that we made at the beginning of this video. Now, consistency wise, you want this to be the same consistency as your average ring pour would be. So a, a average consistency would cover a rain pour, a dirty pour, a straight pour, just your average consistency, okay? So I poured some of that into this little cup so I don't have to thin all of it out. I'm going to, you know, save that for after. Gonna mix this up to an average consistency. And I will show it to you on a piece of paper. Or actually, no, I'll show it to you on a piece of paper. Just a little bit more. And these can these are just test canvases. This is not um, anything special. So I didn't even tape the backs of them, I'm just laying them right in the wet paint. All right, so we're good there. Let me show you what this looks like here. I'm going to keep ripping pieces of cardboard. <laughs> I don't have any paper here. So just your average. Hopefully you saw that. If not, I apologize. So now what I did was when I mixed colors, I put some to the side that I didn't really thin out. I'm going to put these out of the way here. Because again, we need these paints to be a little bit thicker. Okay, so some of them are a little too thick still. So I'm just going to add a touch of water and we're going to go for this. So try to envision what you want your ring pour to look like. Do you want it white in the center with then yellow, red, um, blue, like work out a rainbow pattern or, you know, it's all what you want. You can mix them all together. I'm going to try to go for a little bit of a rainbowy pattern. So into the cup first goes the white. Okay. It's a little bit. Then I'm going to grab some of my yellow that is here. That might have been a little bit too thick. But I guess we'll find out. Some red. Maybe add a little tiny bit more of the white in there. Then I have 
bright aqua green. Some Prussian blue. Some more white. And I think this purple might be too thick. Bear with me one minute here. Yep, just a little bit too thick. I'm gonna thin it out just a little bit to get it to the width of the rest of them are. Hopefully it's not, oh, it seems a lot thinner. Well, we'll go with it. We will go with it. All right, and then I'm gonna end with some white. Onto the canvas, I'm gonna dump the rest of my white there. Okay, and now I'm going to start pouring nice and slow. Get it going. And then kind of move my hand in a circular motion. This might be too much paint, but we'll see. When you get to the end, try to catch that drip so it doesn't throw off your design. Still got me a little bit, but it is what it is. <laughs> so before I go ahead and tilt this, I just want to show you what's going on. See all that? starting to happen all the cells they look like little eyes it's actually pretty cool all right okay so I'm going to take a color, any color here, and just kind of put it on the outside to help my paints go along the canvas. Um, let's see here. A little more of the yellow. Just to kind of lubricate the canvas a little bit. Because what will happen is if you go to roll or tilt this beautiful ring pour on dry canvas, what it does is it rolls over on it, the rings that you've created and it kind of disrupts the pattern. So having some paint there is good. It's a good thing. So I'm going to go this way first, nice and slow. Come this way, actually. Go 
Well, this is a really groovy looking painting so far. I wish I had coated my canvas a little better, but that go that way. We'll come down this way. Okay. Kind of bring it back to the center. And then come down this way. And now I want to concentrate on really opening up this center white area. Sadly, I lost a lot of my color, my blue and my purple and red. And I really need to get over to this yellow edge here. So I'm going to come down really sharp, like really tilt, and then do that. Bye-bye. <laughs> It's no longer a ring, but what I want to do is show you this effect. This is really what I'm trying to do here. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit. So that you can see that white puffy the white puffy center so that's what the, the satin enamel does in a ring pour it makes the center look really really fluffy like clouds am i fond of the color I love that center. Boy, do I love that center. And you can see all the little odd things that are forming now. So we'll let that sit. And we'll check on on our other one. So you can see here, there was not that much. I tilted a lot of the paint off. So wherever the paint was left, you can see you got the little pearl cell things going on there. But this was not a good painting, like aesthetically. <laughs> There's hardly no paint on it. You know, I lost a lot of it, but. We're going to try my mixture now to see if what I'm thinking is right. So let's do that really quick. 
So I figured I'd zip through this part um, and then if it worked, I would tell you what it was. So it definitely works and I'm definitely going to be showing you next what I mixed to make my very own satin enamels product. Just a quick little close up here so that you can see that the pearl cells are developing. Uh, this one area here with all the blue, I didn't stretch that quite enough. So that's why you're seeing minimal, if anything there, but the rest of the areas worked really, really well. Okay, so here's what I did. So, I was looking at my jar of deco art satin enamels and said, what can I use to make my own satin enamels? What does deco art do to create this product? So I started thinking and looking, and this is what I came up with. Deco art sells a white paint. This product here is white. So I said, they must use their brand of white paint. Then I got to the satin enamel part and said, let me see what other products they sell. So then I found this bottle of Deco Art white satin paint. But the problem is, is this is an acrylic paint. This is an, an enamel. So I said, let me look and see what else they sell. So then I found this Deco Art Gloss Enamels in white. So they're all white. We have a regular acrylic paint, a paint that has a satin finish to it, an acrylic paint, and then an enamel that has a gloss to it. And with research... Uh, figuring out the bloom recipe, I know that gloss creates cells. So what I did was I took this and I filled up a cup with the white paint, just a little Dixie cup full of this white paint. Then I took two more Dixie cups and I filled them both half way, half with this and then the other cup half of this. I combined all three together, so I had 50% this, 25% this, 25% this, making it 100%. And once I blended them together, I basically had this. That's what you just saw me use in that experiment video, and it worked. So here's the other thing. This is $9.99 for an eight ounce jar. This is $9.99 for a 16 ounce jar. This here is $5.99 for an eight ounce jar. And this one was $7.99 for an eight ounce jar. So if you do the math, this was $24 approximately. And if you add it all up, we have 32 ounces of product we're making. If you were to buy four jars of this to equal 32 ounces, it would be $40. So essentially, it is half the cost to make your own. So now I'm just going to show you really quick time lapse, me mixing this stuff up so you know what I'm, I'm talking about here. And... Ta-da! If you're ever in a pinch, just get these three products, which they have a lot of the times, and you'll be able to make your own. Okay, three cups. First, a full cup of the acrylic paint, a half a cup of the satin acrylic paint, and a half cup of the gloss enamel paint. Combine all three into a container, airtight container, and then you can store this for later use. You have your own 
satin enamels and also in a minute here you're going to see how um, the body is identical to that of the actual satin enamels. So let's take a look at some dry results from this video. So here is my DIY satin enamels painting, all dry. As you can see, the uh, cells stayed exactly as they were. I'm not very happy with that big blue area in the center, but that is my fault. And here is my cloud pour painting. And I'm telling you, I, at first I didn't like this, but I am so excited to resin this. I think it's going to be really, really pretty. And I'm going to do a lot more of these. So I want to thank you for joining me. Don't forget, everything you need is in the description below as far as coupon codes, links to Amazon, links to Facebook group, other social media. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and please like. And until next time, my friends, I wish you nothing but the best and happy pouring.